Hi, I am Ismail Lazy and I will introduce you to deep learning with Pytorch. In this course, we are going to learn the basic concepts of deep learning, a subfamily of machine learning algorithm which has been at the forefront of recent developments in artificial intelligence. You might have heard of successes of image classification, machine translation, autonomous driving, AlphaGo or computer bots defeating professional players in StarCraft. All of these technologies have been empowered by neural networks, another name for deep learning. The magic of neural networks compared to traditional models is in the fact that classical models used one algorithm for feature extraction, followed by a machine learning classifier, while neural networks do the optimization altogether. The first few layers transform the input into features, which are easy to be classified, while the final layer separates the data based on the features which the previous layers have generated. During the course, we are going to implement many of deep learning central algorithms using the PyTorch library. While the concepts we are going to study are general, the examples we are going to use are mostly computer vision oriented, as are the datasets. There are tons of great deep learning libraries right there. We chose PyTorch because of its simplicity, because it has strong GPU support, and it has already implemented many deep learning algorithms. It having strong object-oriented programming support makes a natural choice for many companies like Facebook and Salesforce, while also being one of the most used deep learning libraries in academical research. Calculating derivatives and gradients is a very important aspect of deep learning algorithms. Luckily, PyTorch is very good at doing it for us. Finally, the library is very similar to NumPy, making the switch from NumPy to PyTorch as painless as possible. Matrices are very important in neural networks. The weights and the values of nets are stored in matrices, and many of the operations are done in terms of matrix multiplication. We quickly review how to multiply two matrices. In order to get the first value, 58, we multiply the first row of the first matrix with the first column of the second matrix, adding in the end each value. Similarly, you do for the other entries. PyTorch's equivalent of NumPy and the arrays is called a torch tensor. You can imagine a tensor being an array with an arbitrary number of dimensions. A tensor can be created by calling torch.tensor, as you can see in the code block on the left. Like in NumPy, you can create random matrices by using torch.rand dim1 dim2. Let's create a random matrix with sizes 2 by 2. Similarly, you can set variables to matrices, and you can check their shape by using that shape function. Multiplying matrices is one of the most common things to do in deep learning. In every neural network you are going to train, there will be millions of matrix multiplications. PyTorch supports matrix multiplication via the torch.methmul function, as can be seen in the example here. Another important operator is element-wise multiplication, where every element in the first matrix is multiplied by the corresponding element in the second matrix, which can be performed in PyTorch via the asterisk operator. Some special types of matrices are matrices of zeros, matrices of ones, and identity matrices. These matrices in PyTorch can be created by using torch.zeros, torch.ones, and torch.i functions, very similar to numpy.zeros, numpy.ones, and numpy.identity. It is easy to convert numpy arrays to torch tensors. It can be done via function from numpy. Similarly, you can convert torch tensors to NumPy arrays via the NumPy function. We have prepared a summary of matrix operations, so don't hesitate to get back to it if you forgot the names of the functions. Let us practice with the concepts we just